Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to convert a 2D image into a 3D image. So the first thing we'll do, we'll take a 2D image and we're going to convert it into a bitmap using GIMP. You can use Paint or Photoshop or any software of your choice. We're then going to take that bitmap into Inkscape and we'll convert it into an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. And we'll offset the layers to give it this 3D effect. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I've opened this file in GIMP, I then convert it into a bitmap. And now to convert it into a bitmap image, I go to file, export as, and you just type in a suffix of BMP at the end and click export, and that will save it in a file location of your choosing. I've already done that. So then we open up Inkscape, which is this software here. If you haven't got it, you can download it, it's free. And you click new document. I then go to file, import and I'm going to choose an image so I'm going to choose this image here I'm going to make these available on my patreon account for free so I'm going to select this image here and I'll click open I'll just okay that if I hold down control and scroll my mouse button it's going to zoom out as you can see the border of the project doesn't match the image that's an easy enough fix we just go to edit and resize page to selection okay from here we go over to the right hand side and under trace bitmap we're going to click multicolor and we're going to change it from brightness steps to colors and what this will do it's going to separate your image into separate layers based on the amount of colors so i've got eight colors here so that's going to create eight layers i'm going to choose maybe 16 layers possibly 20 layers just to see what this looks like it's going to take a while to render okay so there's now 20 colors in there 20 different layers okay i'd be happy with the look of that so i'm going to click apply this might take a few minutes depending on your computer now we're going to take our cursor over to this screen i'm going to right click and i'm going to click hide selected objects i'll then right click this screen again i'm going to click delete to delete the original object i'll then right click again and i'll click unhide objects so now this is the image that we've created i'll then go to file save as and i'm going to save my image as subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends we're then close Inkscape and then open up a new Blender project. I'm going to delete the default cube and now we're going to have to enable an add-on that comes shipped with Blender. So go to Edit, Preferences and search for SVG and this is the one we want. Import, Export, Scalable, Vector Graphics, SVG. So enable that. Once you've enabled that, click this button here and click Save Preferences and that will ensure that this add-on loads every time when you load Blender. We will then import the SVG file. So go to File, Import, and we choose Scalable Vector Graphic, not to be mixed with this SVG as Grease Pencil. We want this Scalable Vector Graphic .svg format here. Then locate the file where you saved your SVG. There's my file there. Subscribe. I'll click Import. This will take a while to import because there was 20 or so layers. So it's taken a couple of minutes. So here are the SVG layers. I'm just going to drag this down. These are all the layers here. Select this bottom one. I'm going to hit Control Shift and then select the top one. I might hit Control and select the top one again. So it's the active one. I'm going to hit Numpad 7 and I'm going to scale this up a bit. So I'm just going to hit S. Hold down Control to snap it to the grid. And I want it around about there perhaps. I might hit G, X snap it to the grid so it's centered i hit g y hold down control to snap it to the grid and i'm just going to center it g y hold down control hold down shift to snap in finer increments that looks center excellent we want to offset all of these on the z axis but i don't want to do it manually so i've actually written a code for this i'll paste the code in the description so you can copy and paste it i'll then drag my cursor to the top right hand corner i'm going to left click and drag this across over here i'm going to click this button here i'm going to go to the text editor and we're going to create a new script so i'm going to copy my script and i'll hit ctrl v to paste that in and then if i click run which is this play button you'll see all these are offset on the z-axis by negative 0.1 which is here and here maybe that's a bit too much for my liking so we're going to edit the script go back i'm going to hit ctrl z let's go back one and maybe i'll change this value to negative 0.025 and i'll do the same for this one 0.025 and then i'm going to run the script again okay that's a bit more like it they're a bit closer together now excellent so i've finished with this script editor i'll then take my cursor to the top right hand corner i'm going to left click when i've got the crosshair drag it across and that will close that window there now if i hit numpad 7 to go into top view let's just go into viewport shading a minute disable my overlays and there's our image 
I'll re-enable the overlays and I'm going to drag this up to around about there. So these materials aren't normal materials. So if I open up my shader editor, so I'll just scroll this up. I'm going to change this to my shader editor. As you can see, there's nothing to edit there. And if I select my sun lamp, let's just move it around slightly. So I hit numpad one just so we can see where it is. So it's a sun lamp. I'm going to set it to a value of five. I'll go over to my object properties and I'm going to change the rotation to zero degrees on the X axis and zero on the Z axis. So it's all zeroed out. It's basically pointing right down. I hit numpad seven. I'm going to do this in cycles by the way. So I'll go over to my render tab and change it to cycles. I'll then hit this button here for viewport shading. Now, if you want to manipulate these materials, like increase the roughness or decrease the roughness, change it to metallic or whatever, just click path one, which is the first layer which just so happens to be this bottom layer here, which I might actually drag up to the top. Yeah, I'm going to drag this layer up to the top just so it makes a bit more sense. So I'm going to hit G, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid. I'm going to bring it to there. In fact, I'm going to have this one above that layer. So I'm going to hit G, Z, just drag this up and then shift select this one, hit G, Z, hold down control. So it's around about there. That makes a bit more sense now. Excellent. So yeah, I'm going to choose this top one in the SVG file. I then go to materials and go to surface. Now, before we click this use nodes button, when we click this, we can't hit control Z to go back a step. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the diffuse color and hit control C to copy that color. I'll then click use nodes. And now we've got a principal BSDF. I'll then hover my cursor over the color and hit control V. So now that color was transferred to the principal BSDF. I hit N, drag this across to around about there just for ease of use so i'll select this one i'll then hit Control c over this color click use nodes and then Control v we don't have to paste it here we can paste it here so for example i'll select this one i'll then hover my cursor over there hit Control c click use nodes Control v and now i'm going to do that procedure for all of these and i'll get right back to you when i'm done Okay, all of those have converted to principal BSDFs. Numpad 7 to go into top view. I'm going to rendered view, and as you can see, it's reacting to the light. Uh, maybe I should have done more layers than 20. There seems to be a bit of an error where it hasn't quite filled it in, but that's not a problem. I can live with that. So where the sun is pointing directly down, obviously we're getting a lot of specular reflecting back at the camera. So I'm going to change my angle. So I'm going to go to object properties. So I'm going to change the rotation on the X axis by anything between 45 to 70 degrees maybe I'll go for 70 degrees I'll just type in 70 the shadow does cause a lot of problems but we can easily sort that out by clicking the data tab over here and under the angle we're going to increase the angle from anything between 90 to 120 degrees which will give us soft shadows I'm going to go for 120 degrees so we're still getting shadows but they're a lot more subtle another thing that we're going to do is just turn on overlays I'm going to hit shift a add mesh and we go for plane I then go to wireframe view I'm going to hit numpad one and I'm going to hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid. I'm going to bring this down to round about there. I'll then hit S2 to scale it up by two, control A and apply the scale. We're going to give this a material. I'm going to make it a black material with one for roughness, so full roughness. So now we're going to set up our camera. So I'm going to hit numpad seven to go into top view. I'll then hit control out numpad zero and that will align the camera to the view. I'll just select my camera. I'm going to go to object properties and under X location, I'm going to hit zero under Y, I'm going to hit zero and maybe on the Z axis, I'm going to hit eight meters. I'll then select my camera data. I'm going to change the focal length so it encompasses the whole image, maybe 170 mil. I'll then go to my rendered view. That's what we've got so far. Let me just go into viewport shading over on my view layer. I'm just going to collapse the SVG collection. I'm going to go to where my camera is. I'll then select the object icon over here. I'm going to open up my timeline. I'm going to change it from shader editor to timeline. Just drag this down a bit. Maybe I'll change the end frame to 480 frames. You can set it to whatever you want. I'm also going to drag my cursor to the top left until I see the crosshair. I'll left click and drag it across. I'm then going to change this to graph editor. Maybe I'll increase this window a bit more. So with your camera selected and you're on frame one over here on the location for the X, I'm going to add a keyframe on the location for Y. I'm going to add a key frame and the rotation for X. I'm going to add a keyframe and the rotation for Y. I'm going to add a keyframe. Those keyframes are going to be up here and click the X location and then change this from F curves 
to modifiers then click add modifier and select noise and this will add a noise modifier so if i push play you can see it's moving erratically so we're going to change the scale of this maybe i'll set this to 50 so it's mellowed out the noise a bit there and maybe i'll change the strength to five and this is where our parallax is going to come from i want this to loop perfectly so i'm going to click restrict frame range we're going to start on frame one we're going to end on frame 480 because there's 480 frames in this scene and i want it to blend in over 60 frames and blend out over 60 frames we can also change the offset so maybe i'll set the offset to 500 just to ensure we've got a completely random seed here okay if this is going to be going left to right we want to rotate it on the y-axis to compensate so it always remains looking at the center of the image so i'm going to copy this x location noise modifier which is is this button here so I'll click this button and then I'll go to Y rotation and then I'll click this button here which will paste that modifier it's going to be way too strong so when I push play it's going to go a bit erratic but then we're going to reduce this strength number we we'll keep reducing it until the camera stays in the center of the image we might even have to go into reverse numbers here there we go you see what's happening there and we're going to do the same for the Y location. So I'm going to skip back to frame one. I'm going to choose this X location. I'm going to copy that modifier. I'll then go to Y location. I'm going to paste it into here, but we're going to change the offset. Let's say 2500. So now we've got a completely random noise pattern to the X location, and we're going to copy that modifier and we're going to paste it into the X rotation because if the camera is moving forwards and backwards, we want this rotation on the X axis to compensate for that with your Y location. Copy that modifier, go to X rotation rotation and paste it in and it's going to be the same procedure so we're going to hit play it's going to go a bit crazy but we're going to reduce this number until the camera remains stable okay with the x rotation we're going into the negative figures here We've got a nice parallax going on there maybe we can bring this beak forward let's hit numpad 7 to go into top view so i'd say these two items need to be in front of this hole first of all i'm going to select this one i'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view i'll then click wireframe and then i hit g z hold down control snap it to the grid maybe hold down control and shift to snap it in finer increments i'm going to bring it up to there and then i'm going to box select all of these here and I'm going to bring these up G Z hold down control snap it to the grid to the roundabout there okay I just hit numpad zero go back into my viewport shading and we also want this object here to be at the top so I'm going to hit numpad one I then hit G Z hold down control snap it to the grid let me just go into wireframe view so we can see what we're doing hit G Z snap it to the grid to around about there and then I'll take this one up G, Z to round about there. I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I go into viewport shading. Okay, with the camera selected, you can do this same procedure with the noise modifiers on the Z location in combination with the focal length so you're compensating the focal length for the distance of the camera i'm not going to do that in this tutorial you'll be able to figure that out based on what i've showed you here so i'm going to take my cursor bring it to the top left until i see the crosshair i'm going to left click drag this across and collapse that window now with the lighting at the moment we've just got kind of a flat lighting setup here with that sun at 70 degrees let's just go into viewport shading and you can see where the sun is in relation to the image i mean g z it doesn't matter the location of a sun all that matters is the direction it's pointing so we're going to add a couple more lights in here maybe i want to light up the eyes for example so i'm going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view and hold down shift and right click here to add my cursor here i'll then hit shift a and we go for light i'll choose a point light i hit numpad one to go into front view it's just going to wireframe view and i'm going to hit g z I'll just bring this up to round about there i hit numpad seven i go back into my viewport shading and with this light selected i'm going to hit out d and that will create an instance of the light i'll then hit x and drag it across to round about there and the reason i created an instance of the light instead of copying it is because if i change a setting over here it's going to change both of the lights at the same time so they're linked together so i hit numpad zero to go into camera view and go into rendered view and for these lights maybe i'm going to change these to like a blue color you could choose an orange color so you can strategically place lights wherever you like in your scene to get the look that you're going for maybe i'll change the radius slightly maybe 0.025 i can turn the brightness right up if you like maybe i'll add another sun lamp in the scene so i'm going to select this sun lamp i'm going to hit shift d 
to create a copy and go to my object properties and I'm going to rotate it negative 80 degrees. I'll mute the first sun lamp and with the second sun lamp selected I'm going to change this to like a orangey color somewhere around there maybe I'll set a strength of 10 and then I'll re-enable this top one. So that's just the standard sun lamp on its own. This is with the two point lights for the eyes and this is the sun lamp. I then go to my render settings over here under sampling. I'm gonna set a noise threshold of 0.025, max samples of 256. That should be more than enough for this scene. I then go to light paths, deactivate reflective and refractive core sticks. I'm gonna drop my glossy and my diffuse rays to two. I'll turn my transmission down to eight and I'll turn the transparency off completely. That will help speed up render times. So if I was to click F12 now or control F12 to render out the image sequence, it's gonna take about a minute to load each frame before it actually starts rendering. I mean, the rendering should take 30 seconds tops, but it will take a good minute or two to load each frame because there's so many layers in the SVG collection. To avoid that, we can scroll all the way down here until you see performance open this window and click persistent data and what that will do it will ensure that the svg data will stay preloaded in your ram so it doesn't have to load it every time then all it has to do is literally render out every image it works out so much quicker so just enable that we're going to go to output we'll then choose a file format i'm going to go for png so i'm going to render out an image sequence and then paste it together in a video editor i'll go rgb i'll keep it at 16 bit and then just choose the file location of your choosing i'm going to choose a folder called tutorial click accept and then simply hit Control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. This is the final result. So if you wanted to add these particles, I'll leave a link in the description to a particle generator tutorial I made. Just follow that and then you can append that project into this one. And of course, the only difference between this render what you're seeing right now and the one that we've just made is I've animated some depth of field just to give the animation a bit more depth. I'll leave several of these images of owls and tigers on my Patreon account, which you can access as a free member. So that's all for now, folks. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.